Welcome back. Up next, Forum Daily's cryptocurrency and digital asset update with Catherine Murray. Catherine is the host of The Buck Stops here, and she joins us now. Take it away. Thanks, Seema. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your cryptocurrency and digital asset update. I am Catherine Murray. Well, what a week it has been in digital assets. Last week, when we, of course, learned that Russia was invading Ukraine, we saw crypto assets decline in lockstep with the equity markets or any type of risk asset class. But it's been a change of tone in the digital asset over the past week. We've actually seen moves higher, significant moves higher in Bitcoin, as well as Solano. Those two coins up by 17% over the past 10 trading days, uh, with a real reversal in thinking here. Bitcoin now trading at about 43,000. There was a tight correlation previously um, as people were viewing cryptocurrencies as a risk on asset. But now they are looking at it as a safer store of value and back to thinking about Bitcoin as a digital gold. Also, of course, an inflation hedge, specifically as we expect interest rates are going to be rising. Um, interestingly as well, though, when we think about the Ukraine-Russia situation, there's more and more calls for Bitcoin to be monitored as well when we think about the sanctions on Russia. In fact, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren is calling on U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to make sure that we are monitoring Bitcoin use uh, from Russia and specifically the uh, Russians that are on the sanction list. We're also hearing that uh, the New York Department of uh, Financial Services is planning to increase their transaction monitoring of crypto use, crypto businesses specifically, and beefing up their sanctions against Russia they're going to be using uh, blockchain technology to try to determine if this is in fact happening. Interestingly as well, Binance, which is the largest crypto exchange, will not ban Russia from using uh, Bitcoin or using their exchange, but will, of course, uh, be compliant with the Russians who are on the sanction list. Um, so a lot going on as it relates to the moves surrounding Bitcoin and the Russia-Ukraine situation. We're also, of course, uh, keeping our eyes on the Bitcoin adoption. Uh, interestingly here, Charles Schwab has filed an SEC, uh, filed with the SEC to launch an ETF to give their clients exposure, anybody who would buy this ETF, um, give them exposure to companies that either use or have some type of use of uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchain. What's interesting to me about this, if you are a, an all-in crypto uh, investor, you believe that every company will have some type of exposure to crypto. Just think back to the internet days where a lot of companies will say, oh yes, we use the internet, and then there were the non-internet companies. The real crypto believers believe uh, that everybody will. And it's interesting that Charles Schwab is creating an ETF uh, that will embody companies that use uh, some type of service of cryptocurrencies. And I believe that they're calling it a Schwab Crypto Economy Index. Um, in addition to that, we're just keeping our eyes on the use of Bitcoin in the Ukraine and Russia situation. And on a positive note, which I'll end it on, um, so far I understand that, you, the, that Ukraine has received $35 million in donations, in crypto, that is according to Elliptic. Nima, I'll leave it there. Back to you. Always good to end on a positive note. Thanks for that, Catherine. For more analysis and news on the markets, be sure to tune in to Catherine Murray on The Buck Stops here.